Hey everyone, welcome to the Cincinnati Zoo. My name is Jenna. I am a keeper in the Africa department and we are here at Hippo Cove with Bibi and Fiona. We wanted to make sure that you guys knew we are taking wonderful care of the hippos and all the animals here at the Cincinnati Zoo. You don't have to worry about them. We're still here. It actually gives us a little bit more time to spoil them and give them more love um, now that we can focus just on the animals. So you don't have to worry about them. Bibi here is weighing in at 3,500 pounds. And Fiona over here is weighing at just over 1,300 pounds. So we wanted to tell you guys a little bit about them. And hopefully if you listen carefully, you'll be able to participate in a quiz at the end of this and get all of the answers right. So we hope you enjoy. And uh, we'll tell you a little bit about our hippos. Uh, this is actually a 70,000 gallon water tank uh, for the hippos and it's all from recycled rainwater. So that's pretty amazing. We aren't pulling any water in. Um, it's all recycled rainwater, which is part of our, our mission here at the Cincinnati Zoo to be really conservation oriented and sustainable and doing really good things for the earth. So that's something we're really proud of. While Bibi here is walking across the ground, I wanted to mention, some of you might already know this, but hippos actually do not swim. They are known as the river horse because they walk through the water and um, they sink, so they're pretty dense and heavy, and they do have a little bit of floating abilities in the water, but they really do sink and they don't swim. So if you pay close attention to their feet, you'll notice they push off of the bottom and they walk along the bottom of the rivers. This is really important because it actually helps pave paths for smaller animals in the wild, um, and it actually moves the grasses and the weeds away so that animals smaller than hippos can go through those paths that they make as they move through the water. So hippos are really cool animals. You can see Fiona's feet right now. <laughs> she showed you that <laughs> they do have four toes, which is pretty cool. Um, and I mentioned that these guys are known as the river horse, uh, but actually their closest relative is the whale or the porpoise. And I'm really hoping one of these two will show you why um, it's obvious that they are related to whales and porpoises. When they get really excited or moving really quickly like Fiona is, sometimes they jump through the water and come out um, above it like a dolphin would or a porpoise would. So these two are really fun to watch in the late afternoons. Hopefully when the zoo opens back up, you can make it here and I suggest coming later on in the day. They become really active and they're actually nocturnal. So most of the time earlier in the day, you will see them sleeping. It's what they would do in the wild to keep them safe from the sun and biting insects. So you can imagine it's nicer to be in the nice cool water in the heat of the day and then come out on land to graze for grass at night uh, when the sun isn't so bad and the bugs aren't so bad. But they actually produce something called blood sweat. It's a special mucus that keeps them safe in many ways. It acts as a sunscreen, it acts as a bug repellent, and, um, and it also works as an antiseptic. So hippos have large teeth, we call them tusks, they're ever growing and they are made out of ivory. And those tusks are used for fighting, defending each other, um, or fighting off one another, defending their calves, males fighting off other males to defend their females or their territory. So they do have these large tusks which, which we'll head up to our training wall and show you guys a better view of their teeth uh, here in just a second. Um, but their tusks are ever growing and they are really important to a hippo's safety. Hippos don't really have too many predators uh, other than the calves, but their moms are so protective that they don't have to worry too much about lions or hyenas or crocodiles unless there is something like a drought um, and the hippos get weak or hungry or the mothers uh, can't protect their calves as much because they can't hide them in the water. So unfortunately, hippos' biggest threat is habitat loss, humans, um, poaching, uh, drought, things like that. But otherwise, those giant tusks keep them really safe. Let's see if we can get the hippos over for you guys. If anyone is new to Fiona and Bibi, um, if you haven't heard, Fiona is a world famous hippo because she was born at least six weeks premature. So most hippos are about 75 to 100 pounds when they're born, but Fiona was only 29 pounds. Uh, their gestation is eight months. And Fiona uh, was supposed to be due around uh, the uh, beginning of March. <laughs> yeah, you should have been born three years ago about this week, huh? But instead she was born on January 24th and she was only 29 pounds. So she wasn't able to stand and therefore she wasn't able to nurse and she became colder and weaker and we decided that 
her only chance was for us to step in. So BB was a first time mom. We're not exactly sure why Fiona was premature, um, but BB didn't cause her any harm. She just didn't know how to help her. Uh, BB actually shifted over for food and we were able to go in and, and try and help Fiona warm up by putting some hay on the ground. And um, she just wasn't able to stand. So about an hour later, we decided it was definitely time for us to step in. And once again, BB moved over for food and had no issues leaving Fiona, which is a really good sign to us that BB knew she wasn't able to take care of Fiona because mothers in the wild are fiercely defensive and they would totally never let us uh, take their baby from them. So the fact that BB did move over kind of showed that she knew Fiona needed some extra help. During this, you are welcome to send in any questions you have. Um, we will try and get to some of them or all of them, but we probably have a lot of questions coming in. Hopefully uh, you're learning as we go and I'm answering some of those questions. We wanted to mention that hippos eat a lot of food. You can see them getting romaine lettuce right now. They also get squash, cucumber, Timothy hay, and especially formulated herbivore grain. It has all the vitamins and nutrients that they need, it, need in it. And um, they produce a lot of waste because of that. They actually have really slow digestive systems. And um, so even though they aren't eating tons and tons of food and it's all really healthy, they still maintain this size because they have a slow metabolism. They produce about 22 pounds of waste a day. I think that might be on the low side. <laughs> Sometimes we have competitions to see who has the most in their wheelbarrow and we actually weigh it. And then we have to push it up a ramp to dump it. And the highest we've had so far is 316 pounds. That was three days worth of hippo dung. <laughs> so it is a little bit waterlogged. We do clean our indoor pools every couple of days. So that is in water, but still over 300 pounds from two hippos in less than four days. So hippos do produce a lot of waste. You might have noticed our fish uh, earlier. We have tilapia here in our recycled rainwater pool and they actually have an important job. They help us keep the pool clean by eating hippo dung, the dead skin cells off the hippos, so they kind of get like a, a facial for the hippo skin, and also the algae off of the rock work and the windows. Thankfully, we do have some awesome volunteers that dive in here and help us scrub the windows and everything when the hippos are inside um, to help us keep it extra clean for everyone. But the tilapia do have a job, and that is to help eat some of that hippo poop, which is kind of crazy. So Fiona and Bibi are the only two hippos we have here right now, and a group of hippos is called a bloat. So Bibi and Fiona kind of make their own family. A group of hippos kind of depends on the amount of water and resources around, but it could be a very large group, up to 30 or 40 hippos all in one spot, depending on what the resources allow. Uh, typically, hippos will get along pretty well, other than when they're fighting over territory or mating rights. Um, so they are known as one of the most dangerous animals um, in Africa. And that's because they're actually sharing space with humans more often than other predators. These guys aren't trying to eat humans, but if you do uh, come there to bathe, do your laundry, go fishing, and you get in the wrong spot at the wrong time, a male hippo or a mother hippo is really likely to kind of try and uh, get you to go away. And they have these giant tusks. <laughs> Fiona's stealing all the food. She says, mom, back up. <laughs> BB likes uh, food very, very much. And she will sit and beg, even though she has a mouthful of <laughs> lettuce, you can probably see back there. But we also wanted to show you their tusks. So they're self-sharpening. Every time she opens and closes her mouth, the top one rubs against the bottom one and they actually self-sharpen. So they are very, uh, very effective when they need to defend themselves. I mentioned earlier that hippos will spend a lot of time in the water, up to 16 hours a day. And uh, they actually can hold their breath for at least five minutes. New research is coming out. It could be more, but about average is five minutes or so. They actually have a natural reflex that allows them to come up for a breath while staying asleep, which is pretty amazing. So they can be taking a nap underwater and their body will tell them to come up for a breath and they'll do that without ever waking up. Hey Jenna, we have a question. Um, somebody wants to know, what is the largest a hippo can get? I've read some crazy numbers saying that hippos can get to 8,000 or 9,000 pounds, but that seems probably like a seven foot human. It doesn't happen too often, but it can. Bibi is a very large female and she's 3,500 pounds. So I can't imagine a hippo double her size. I think that would be a little bit terrifying. But uh, yeah, they say the largest a hippo can get is about 8,000 pounds. 
Another question is, do they ever lose their teeth? You know, um, only sometimes they will break off during fights or fall out naturally, but other than their baby teeth, they don't typically lose teeth. The other question is, are those whiskers that they're seeing? Yes, so that's a great question. We do have whiskers here, just like all mammals have fur or hair. Hippos do also. You can see on their ears. Unfortunately, you can't see their tails right now, but they do have a thicker, wiry uh, hair on their tail. And I'm guessing they're, that's to help them sense vibrations underwater and communicate and also maybe help them feel through the murky waters. The, the water in Africa isn't always quite as clear as it is here, and you would have no idea there's a hippo under you if they didn't want you to know. So um, those whiskers probably help a lot with that. One thing that I think is really fascinating, when hippos do come on land, it's my favorite thing to watch them run. They can run up to 18 or 19 miles per hour. Can you imagine that? That's faster than humans on these teeny little legs weighing thousands of pounds. It's really impressive. I really suggest you guys check out some of our YouTube videos on the Cincinnati YouTube page if you haven't seen those yet. We do have a few of Fiona running. Um, we have actually a really fun food taste test video that we did. Uh, it was not super scientific, but it was still a lot of fun and we were able to determine um, that the hippos do like certain foods other more than others, but overall they are not picky, so it's a little bit hard to, to know for sure what their favorites are. But one of them is definitely melon. So in the wild, hippos would listen for fallen fruit, and um, they would find it on the ground and eat that. Otherwise, they're going to eat a lot of grass, but on special occasions they would find fruit, and on special occasions we do give them their favorites here like cantaloupe, honeydew, watermelon. Pumpkin is a big one if you're here in October. It's really fun. Every weekend we do a pumpkin smash and Bibi can actually fit a whole pumpkin in her mouth at once and crush it. It's really impressive, very cool to see. I highly suggest watching videos on that if you're not able to make it here to the Cincinnati Zoo later on um, in the year. But these guys love to eat. So they're very food motivated, which allows us to do a lot of awesome training and take really good care of them. So, for example, last week we were able to get a voluntary blood draw on Fiona, which means she uh, stood in a spot, she was trained to lean in against a gate, she got fed, and um, also was getting her blood drawn from her tail during that. So it was pretty amazing that she allowed that. I think she's better with needles than a lot of us are. Definitely less scared of them than I am. And the great news is it was voluntary. She could have left anytime she wanted to, and she chose to be there. So we're really proud of the things that we do to keep our animals nice and healthy without stressing them out. Gotten lots of questions about, does Fiona really like people? She was raised <laughs> by people. It seems like she really has a good connection. Yeah, absolutely. Do you think that's true? Uh, there's no doubt in my mind. So obviously there is food here right now, but if there wasn't food and we were up here, Fiona would definitely come say hi to us. <laughs> she loves people. Um, she doesn't even have to know you to love you, but she does have favorites as far as <laughs> she knows certain people um, by their voice and by sight and sound. If she's inside, I can call her name and she will come out. So she's a lot like a dog. Um, Bibi is also very smart. Fiona will come over if I don't have food and she wants attention. Uh, Bibi usually stays in, in her spot if she's comfortable and there's no food offered. So there is a difference. Fiona also always finds the camera. You may have seen things, <laughs> videos, pictures all over the internet of Fiona being um, in engagement photos and, and posing for photos of people who came here for the first time or came across the world to see her. And it's like she really knows and she loves the attention. Uh, we're not making that up <laughs> by any means. <laughs> She's actually so popular, we've started doing uh, cameos. If you guys aren't familiar with cameos, they are actually um, a website or an app you can go to and um, pay to have your favorite celebrity send you a message. So yes, Fiona is now considered a true celebrity. She is on Cameo. And um, if you do buy a message uh, to be sent from Fiona, the proceeds help us take really good care of the animals here at the zoo. So you can hop on there and have a message from Fiona and Bibi sent to you if you would like. One of our five-year-old followers is asking, how much do hippos eat in a day? It's a really good question. So they're eating a lot of grass in the wild um, and it takes a lot to sustain them. There's not an exact number, but it could be up to 100 pounds or so a night. 
here, they're getting really nutritious foods, so they're sharing 40 pounds of Timothy hay, so that's a bale of hay. If you've ever sat on a, a straw bale, imagine that. Timothy hay, these girls will share that. Then they also get three pounds of herbivore grain, and then they get about five or so pounds of lettuce, squash, and cucumber each. So we use a lot of the produce for things like this for training and um, different enrichment. These girls are really good at puzzle feeders. We'll put grain and lettuce in feeders that they have to knock around for the food to fall out. So they have to exercise a little bit to get it, and it keeps them busy and happy and healthy. Can you answer the question as to what their skin feels like? Yes. So you can see this right here. I mentioned the blood sweat. It's actually a mucus. If you've ever caught a fish or felt your dog slobber, that's kind of what it feels like. Um, so they can be really slimy, depending on if they're stressed or hot, it'll be red and look like sweat kind of dripping out. Um, like you might see beads of sweat on your forehead, but you can see right now it's just a white lather because they're not stressed or hot. And so with the, with that slimy feeling and then these little bumps, um, and they're kind of firm, but it gives a little bit. We say an avocado. I know that's a really long answer. We think they feel like a slobbery avocado. Um, that's the best we can describe. <laughs> Can you talk a little bit about their unusual um, hoop, hooping mechanism they do? <laughs> <laughs> so the males actually do what's called dung showering. I mentioned that they're really territorial. It's one of the reasons they're so dangerous. And so a way a male can mark his space and let another male know it's his territory is to defecate and actually swing their tail back and forth really quickly. And the hippo dung flies everywhere. So the females don't really do it. Um, at least not that I know of. Ours definitely don't. And the males are the ones marking their territory. So males will defecate and flip their tails back really fast and it will go way up in the air <laughs> and get everywhere actually. So it kind of is like, hey, this is my spot. Don't come near it. Are hippos endangered? You know, they are uh, labeled as vulnerable right now. Unfortunately, as habitat loss becomes a bigger and bigger issue, um, more wildlife human contact happens and then more conflict happens. So these guys are actually being hunted now for their teeth. It is ivory just like an elephant's tusk. And while elephants are disappearing and also at the same time being watched and protected more, people are now starting to go for hippos. So currently they're just vulnerable, but they are definitely, um, we, we need to do a lot to kind of keep them healthy and populations where they are and hopefully grow. So that's one of the most important things about Bibi and Fiona living here is that they're wonderful ambassadors for hippos in the wild. I'm sure most of you never thought twice about a hippo being cute before you saw Fiona, um, but we're really hoping that her job here at the zoo is to be an ambassador and inspire one or a million of you to do a small or big act and start protecting hippos. They are one of the largest animals in their habitat. So if we protect them, we're also protecting the smaller animals that live in the same spaces. So Fiona here has a really, really important job. And I think she's one of the very best out of all animals in zoos at inspiring people to love wildlife, especially hippos. So um, these guys are really, really important ambassadors. And we hope that after learning even more about them, you guys will do as much as you can, like recycling or turning your lights off or turning the water off while you brush your teeth to make a little bit of a difference for all animals. Did you talk about how big Fiona is right now? Um, I mentioned at the very beginning, but in case you missed it, Fiona is weighing in over 1,300 pounds. We will weigh her tomorrow. We weigh them every Tuesday for a more accurate, but she was about 1,350 pounds last Tuesday. Now, granted, I mentioned they can go to the bathroom and defecate about 22 pounds of waste a day. So every once in a while, we will see a 10 or 20 pound um, drop with them. And it's really not a big deal. It'd kind of be like you losing one to three pounds um, in a day. So these guys do, <laughs> do fluctuate a little bit. But Fiona is a little bit small for a hippo that's three. However, I mentioned we do the blood draws and we were able to see that all of her organs are functioning properly. She's doing great. We really aren't worried about her. Um, she might just take a little bit longer to catch up or she might always be a petite hippo. And I know uh, most of us wouldn't mind if <laughs> she stayed small as long as she's healthy. Aiden is age six and he wants to know if we ever give them a bath. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, that's a great question. And not the typical bath, but we did do a bubble bath for Fiona's third birthday where she got to play in a bunch of bubbles that were in the water. 
However, secret, Fiona is very scared of bubbles blowing at her. We've tried it for enrichment a few times and she is just like, what is that floating at me right now? Um, but we give them baths with a hose. They actually find hoses being sprayed directly in their mouth. Full force feels really good. So we'll use it kind of like a water pick and clean out all of the little crevices in their mouth and make sure their, their teeth and gums are nice and healthy. Um, and then they do like to feel it on their heads and that, but we don't actually bathe them with soap. If you guys have any other questions, uh, let us know. We're going to start wrapping it up. We hope you really enjoyed this Facebook Live uh, home safari with Fiona and Baby. We'll be bringing more to you all week. And um, we're not sure how long they'll last, depending on how, every, how everything goes um, when the zoo opens back up. But we hope you learned. We hope you stick around for the quiz afterwards. And you'll have a chance to win four tickets to the Cincinnati Zoo. And, um, yeah, any last questions for us? How's their eyesight? Their eyesight, that's a good question. I've never read anything um, scientific on it. My guess is their eyesight is um, pretty average. So basically, these guys have sort of small eyes for the size of their body, um, but they can see underwater. They have a nictitating membrane that is a clear eyelid that goes over their eyes so they can open their eyes underwater in dirty water and it not affect them or hurt their eyes in any way. Um, but usually animals with really large eyes compared to their bodies are the ones that have the best vision. Um, so I'd say hippo vision is probably average, but I truly do not know a great answer for that. <laughs> Hi, what are you doing? You'll notice Fee falls back and forth because she is so small still, she has to stand on her hind legs and put her front feet on the wall. Um, so she sinks back down when she gets tired and then comes back for more food. Baby is on all four fours right now, just resting her chin on the wall. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed, and hopefully you'll join us again tomorrow and uh, participate in our quiz afterwards. Hope you learned a little bit more about hippos, and have a great day.